in the intricate tapestry of life, the concept of inherited change with a profound narrative that spans generations. A topic of fascinations and exploration, especially for an A-level student, inherited change dwells into the intricate interplay between genetic environment and evolution. As we embark on this intellectual journey, we unravel the mysteries of how traits, behavior, and characteristics are passed down through generations, shaping the very essence of who we are. Join us as we dwell into the fascinating realm of inherited change where the threat of the past intertwined with the possibilities of the future. Meiosis. Meiosis is a specialized cell division process occurring in cells of the testes and ovaries in the human body. The unique divisions result in the formations of gametes such as sperm and egg, each with half the normal number of chromosomes. Meiosis, in contrast to mitosis, comprises two divisions leading to the formations of four daughter cells. And these cells processes only half the number of chromosomes compared to the parent cells exhibit different combinations of alleles distinct from both each other and the original parent cells. Human body cells are deployed containing two complete sets of chromosomes. However, through meiosis, gametes are produced and these gametes are haploid, consisting of only one complete set of chromosomes. Before the initiations of meiosis, DNA replication occurs in a manner similar to that before mitosis. However, during the early stage of meiosis, homologous chromosomes, which are the two matching chromosomes in a nucleus, undergo pairing. How meiosis causes genetic variation. Meiosis generates genetic diversity through process like crossing over and independent assortment. Additionally, variation arises when gametes form during meiosis unite to form a zygote. Each chromosome in a homologous pair carries gene for the same characteristic at the same locus and the ally, allele of the genes on the two chromosomes may the same or different. During prophase one, as the two homologous chromosomes lie side by side, their chromatids form link called chiasmata with each other which means that a site of closing over. And as they move apart, a piece of chromatid from one chromosome may swap places with a piece from the other chromosome and phenomenon known as closing over. And this process results in each chromosome having different combinations of alleles than it did before. And this is the process how the independent assortment happen. Independent assortment is a feature of meiosis contributing to genetic variation. In the first meiotic division, homologous chromosome pairs align on the equator and before it's segregating to opposite cells end. And each pair 
behavior is independent, we are doing numerous unique combinations of allele. Let's look into the genetic. Genetics are transmitted from parents to offspring within the nuclei of gametes. In sexual reproductions, gametes match to form a zygote containing one set of chromosomes from each parent. The assimilation of gene transmission from parents to offspring is known as genetic. Genes and alleles. In a diploid cells, the two chromosomes that are similar, such as the two chromosomes, are referred to as homologous. And each of these homologous chromosome contain the same gene at corresponding positions known as the locus of that gene. Consequently, a diploid cell processes two copies of each gene and one on each homologous chromosome. Gene frequently exists in various forms. For instance, the gene responsible for encoding a protein like CFTR, which form a chloride transporter channel in cell membranes, exhibit a normal variant along with several mutant alleles. Alleles represent the different forms of a gene homozygotes and heterozygotes. An organism that has two identical alleles for a particular gene is homozygote. An organism that has two different alleles for a particular gene is heterozygote. Dominant and recessive. Example, F represent normal cystic fibrosis and small f represent mutant alleles. Three combinations of these alleles in diploid organism is FF, BF, small f, BF, small f. These are possible genotypes of organism, and these different genotypes give rise to different phenotypes, the observable characteristics of the organism. These are the output where you have genotype and phenotype. Capital F is represent phenotype normal. Capital F and small f is also phenotype normal, but this genotype is a normal but a carrier for cystic fibrosis. And capital F and F is cystic fibrosis. Capital F, F. Genotype does not cause cystic fibrosis because capital F alleles is dominant and small f is recessive. The dominant allele alleles is one that is only ex expressed when a dominant allele is not present. The dominant alleles should always be symbolized by a capital letter and a recessive alleles by a small letter. The same letter should not should be used for both, but not F and C. Monohabitants, inheritance in the gene. <laughs> in the given scenario, the man has genotypes capital F, -F meaning half of his sperm carry the capital F alleles and the other half carry the small f allele. The woman with a genotype of capital F, F produces eggs containing only the capital F alleles. So parents genotype might have capital F, small f, and the woman's type is both capital F. Gamete's genotype, this is the way how you draw which is capital F and small f, and this is capital F. When you build out the offspring genotype and phenotypes, you might have under X is capital F, 
sperm, you have capital F and small f. When the F, capital F, meets with the F, so you, the result will be capital F, normal. And when the combinations of capital F and small f, you get capital F, and F is also normal. As a result from this, in the conclusions, consequently, their genetic diagram would indicate that their potential children could have genotypes capital FF or capital FF, reflecting the combinations of alleles from both parents. And there is no chance they will have a child with cystic fibrosis. The second example is in the scenario, both parents have genotype F small f. Parents genotype capital F and the mother's genotype is capital F and small f. When you draw gametes genotype, you might have capital F and small f, capital F and small f. And when you tabulate the offspring genotype and phenotype, you might have X, capital F, and small f, and sperm is capital F and small f. When there is a combination between X and sperm, capital F and F, you get the children might have FF, which is represent normal. And when F, X, combine combined with the sperm F, capital F, you might have the children have the capital F and small f, which is indicate normal. On the other side, when you have the F combined with the small f, you might have capital F and F, which represent normal. And however, when the F small f combined with the F, you might get small f, which is indicate cystic fibrosis. So, the answer or as a conclusion, based on the above scenario, each time they have a child, there is one in four chance it will have genotype FF and have cystic fibrosis. Let's look into the process of meiosis. In the process of meiosis, there will be a several steps from phase one to phase two. During first phase one, centrolus divide and are involved in spindle formation and the chromosome beginning to condense. And during at first phase one also, the spindle continues to form and the chromosome pair and are now visible as bivalents. At the stage of metaphase one, the nuclear envelope disappear. The bivalents or chromosomes are arranged on the equator, as you see in the diagram. And then from metaphase one, it moves to the process of anaphase one. So during anaphase one, where you can see the homologous chromosome is separate, which is the pulled by the splinter fibers. And when it moves to the telophase and cytokinesis, the cell pinches in the middle and indicates that the cells also divide. And during the phosphase two, there is establishment of two daughter cells. And when it goes to metaphase 2, there will be a chromosome slide out at the equator. And during the anaphase 2, there will be sister chromatids pull apart. You can see from this diagram, they are pulling apart. They are separated. And when it comes to the stage of telophase 2 and cytokinesis, the cells pinches in the middle. And finally, at the end 
of the meiosis processes, there will be establishment of four granular cells. These are the steps or some plain information that are put into highlight on how to answer exam questions. And first of all, you need to know that it is very crucial and important to show the whole genetic diagram, not just the planet square, the table showing genotype of the offspring, the gametes genotype line in the genetic diagram that shows different kinds of gametes, the, the parents. If only one kind gametes, you need to write down one kind. And thirdly, the gametes genotype as shown with a circle drawn around them. If you do this, the examiner will understand that they represent gametes. The easiest and quickest way to mark starting the phenotype produced by each genotype among the offspring. Write the phenotypes in the box in the planet square. The genotypes inside the planet square show the chances or probability of each genotype being produced. Or an alternative way of writing a one in four chance example in the previous diagram, is probability of 0 0.25 or 25% probability. And on top of that, you also have to provide the final answer in the form of expected ratio. Example, we would expect the ratio of unaffected offspring to offspring resisted fibrosis to be Three to one. In addition to the final answer, you may also consider to answer like the chance of any individual child inherit a particular genotype is unaffected by the genotype of any children. Each time a child is conceived, the chances are the same as shown in the genetic diagram above. That's all for today. I hope you now grasp the essence of inherited change. Best of luck in your studies and a heartfelt thank you for your attention and support. Please don't forget to subscribe to Jom Study Lai YouTube channel and please enable your notifications, stay engaged and informed. Thank you.